speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty how silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Jim Murdoch was a strange man. A suspicious nature and an uncontrollable temper made it hard to know him well. His life's total of true friends could be counted on the fingers of one hand. The passing years had reduced this total. Two of his friends had died, and Dave Madison had moved from Cedar Point to take up the duties of sheriff in the county seat. Then, a landslide in the nearby Gold Hills had taken the life of Murdoch's wife. In the five years that followed the tragedy, Murdoch lived for his daughter, his general store, and his violent temper. He knew that nearly everyone in town called him a madman. But he didn't mind that. Jessie understood him. Jessie became more like her mother every day. When she came into the store, the old man's eyes lighted with pleasure. Hello, Dad. What can I do, Dad? Oh, Jessie, my sakes. The day ain't started until you get in. Oh, silly. You see me at breakfast? Yeah, and that fixes things right at the house. But the store ain't like it should be until you've been around. Oh, you. Eh, you sure it ain't too much for you to keep things tidy in the house? Of course not. We could get a smaller place. We got more room than we need. We'll do nothing of the sort. The house means a lot to you. Yes, I reckon it does. Seems like a party of my is still around there. Eh, well, I guess I'm a sentimental old fool. You're an old darling. Eh, stand right there a minute, Jessie, and let me look at you. You're getting more like your mother every day. <laughs> Is that it? Well, that ain't what I was going to say, Jesse. No? You got a special look about you this morning, honey. A special happy look. Uh-huh. Dad, I, I've got the biggest news in the world for you. Yeah? You know Ben Gilbert. Gilbert? That freckle-faced redhead? Now, don't take that attitude, Dad. Uh, he was in here a few weeks ago. Trying to tell me I should get more modern in the stock of mining supplies I carry. Is that all you've got against Ben? I told him if he didn't like the way I run my store, he could stay out. Well, you're going to know him a lot better. And when you do, you'll like him as, as much as I do. I don't have to like him. I don't want to like him, the lazy good-for-nothing. That's what he is, sitting around doing nothing. Oh, that's where you're wrong, Dad. He inherited a good mine up in the hills. Then why don't he go up there and work it? Oh, don't be so angry. <laughs> He couldn't work it until he had a clear title to it. He's going to start working it within the next few days. The title is clear now, and 
All he needs is tools and powder and things. Jesse, don't you try to persuade me about Ben Gilbert. I don't want no part of him. You'll have to change your mind, Dad. I won't. He'll be in here to buy his supplies, and then you'll know that... I won't sell to him. He don't like my stock, so he can go elsewhere, and that's final. I wouldn't sell to him if he paid ten times the regular price. Dad, you, you can't refuse to sell to him. You have the Holy Store nearby. They don't sell the things he needs at any other store in the county. Good, that'll teach the young scamp. He can't get the things he needs unless you sell them to him. Good, I says good. I'm glad of it. If, if you don't change about Ben Gilbert, you won't have me. What say? What's that you say? Jesse Murdoch, you better say that again. Maybe I didn't hear it right. Dad, I, I've married Ben Gilbert. <laughs> Dad, don't look like that. Please, Dad, don't look at me that way. You, you married without asking me. Oh, but, Dad, I... He, he stole you away from me. Oh, no, no, Dad, you're wrong. No, no, I've lost you. Oh, but you haven't. We have another member of the family, that's all. Please try to see it that way. Get out of here. Dad. Get out of my store. My store. What good is it now? Why should I bother with a store? I got no one to spend money on. Oh, Dad, don't do that. No. <coughs> You've smashed your counter. What good's a glass counter? What good's a lot of tins of tomatoes? What good is anything? I'll smash everything. I'll show them. I'll make the whole town suffer. They all can blame it on Ben Gilbert. They can blame him on the man that stole my daughter. Ben, it was awful. Jesse, tell me, honey. What happened? I, I told Dad about us. Yes? He, he flew into a terrible rage. The worst I've ever seen. He threw tin goods all over the store and smashed his glass counter and smashed the door and window. Darned old curmudgeon. He, he feels that you've stolen me away from him. Did you try to explain? There was no explaining anything to him, Ben. I don't know what we're going to do with him. We're not going to do anything with him. We're going to leave him alone. But Ben... I was willing to live in his house for his sake. But I'm a lot better pleased to live here. Oh, but the poor old man. Ben, he, he does need me. He has no one. Jesse, you can't throw away your life. You'll have a long time to live. After your father's gone. Besides, honey, he's mad. No. No, Ben, not like you mean. Everyone says he's mad. Ben, I, I had hoped, oh, I had hoped and prayed that things would turn out differently. I, I don't want to be made to choose between you and Dad. Well, that's what it boils down to, Jesse. I suppose you'll hate me more than everything else in the world. Yes, it, he'll try to hurt you. He'll stop at nothing to hurt you just as much as he can. He'll try to hurt you as deeply as he's been hurt. I can take care of myself, Jesse. Don't worry. Ben, what if it's you or my father? Well, that's a choice you have to make, dear. Your dad or me. No, no, I... I mean, what if it's your life or his? What if the choice is up to you? Late afternoon of the same day brought Dan Reeves into the town of Cedar Point. Oh, there, there. He reined up in front of the general store to purchase supplies. As he dismounted, he noted with amazement the door and window were smashed. Inside, it looked as if a cyclone had struck the place. Cans and boxes were scattered all over the floor. Furnishings were smashed and the oil lamps torn from the ceiling. As he walked through the store, he heard a voice from the back room. This place ain't open for business. What happened here? Nothing that concerns you. Are you Mr. Murdoch? I don't know what if I am. Oh, there you are. What's the matter with you? Don't you understand English? I told you to get. But, Mr. Murdoch, what I... What do you want here, anyhow? I wanted to buy some supplies. My friends are camped a few miles out of town. I ain't in business no more. I'm packing a few things, and then I'm clearing out. Oh, golly. That's too bad. Did someone wreck your store? Uh, save your questions for some that's in their mood to answer. Uh, oh, doggone case is heavy. Here, let me help you carry it. Uh, thanks. I can use help. I can, I'll take this, then. Uh, Take it right out back. Right through that door. All right. I'm loading the things on my wagon. Do you have a team? Yeah, in the barn. Now, 
Face the road. I won't hack the next one so far. I can stick around and help you if you'd like. No, I... Yeah. Maybe I could use some help. Get me away from here that much sooner. Tell you what, son. You help me load my wagon, then you can take whatever goods you want. Neither the Lone Ranger nor Tonto were greatly surprised when Dan rode into camp at sundown empty-handed. Move me to the stage, buddy. Move me. Uh, the saddle bags look plenty empty, Dan. They are empty, Tonto. Did uh, Murdoch take a dislike to you, Dan? What's the matter with that man? Him plenty strange color. He sure is. His store was wrecked. Things were scattered all over the place, and he was loading a wagon, getting ready to pull stakes. That's something new. I helped him load up. Then he told me to help myself to anything I wanted. He wouldn't take any money, though, so I didn't take any supplies. Did he say why he was leaving? No. Or did you ask him? Every time I asked a question, he told me to mind my own business. Who was he taking with him? A lot of tin food and rifles. All the rifles and ammunition in store. And all the blasting powder. Did you see him start? No, he wouldn't leave until I'd gone. We'd better ride into town, Toto. A good idea. We still need supplies, and Dan's report will bear inspection. That'll look. Ah. Plenty mess. That's what I told you, Tonto. Here's a pile of stuff I picked out. I left it here when Murdoch refused money for it. Murdoch seems to have left. His wagon's gone. The stable's empty. He was all set to leave when I rode away. Yeah, what's this? Seems to have left a note. Oh, I didn't see that. Kimbasabi. Yes? Someone rain up outside. I think that girl is Murdoch's daughter. Maybe she'll know where the old man went and why. I wonder who's with her. Ben, just look at this door. Him named Ben. Yes, Tom. There's no point trying to talk to him, Jackie. Look at what he's done to the store. Now, you promised to try, Ben. I'll try. I, I... Oh! Mask! I, I didn't know there was anyone in here. We left our horses in back. What are you doing here? Looting the place? Hardly that. Where's Mr. Murdoch? He uh, seems to have gone away. He left a note addressed to Ben Gilbert. I'll take it. Is that your name? Of course it is. Mr. Murdoch is my father. This is Mr. Gilbert, my husband. Oh, there you are, Gilbert. Thanks. What does he say, Ben? Does he say where he's gone? Jesse, listen to this. When you read this, I'll be on my way to your Galconda gold mine with enough supplies to last me for months. Now that you've taken my daughter, you just try and get to your claim. You took the thing I love best, so I've done the same to you. Oh, Ben. So you own the Galconda? Yeah, the title was just clear to me. Jesse, do you think your father means what he says? Oh, yes, Ben. He means every word of it. Then he's got to be moved. I've got to work that mine. I've borrowed money on it to get the title cleared. If I don't get the cash out of it, I'll lose it. Dan, I'm writing a note. Yes? I ride to the county seat, hand this to the sheriff. All right. There. There you are. Shall I take you right now? Yes, Dan. And stay with the sheriff. Go where he goes. We'll meet you later. All right. Did you tell the sheriff what had happened here? Yes, I thought he might be needed. When your determination to get the mine clashes with Murdoch's determination to hold it, there's likely to be fireworks. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Darkness overtook the Lone Ranger and Tonto as they rode from Cedar Point in the ruins of Murdoch's store heading for the Golconda Mine. They dismounted at the foot of the hill and went up the dark trail leading their horses. The sheriff won't get here until morning, Tonto. Then Gilbert planned to wait till morning, too. I'd like to talk to Murdoch before they arrive. Maybe we can reach him before his defenses are set up. This trail, plenty dark. I know where the mine is located. Not good. It's far uphill? No, Kimasabi. Just about a quarter of the way. Hold it, Toto. Rifle over that way. Plenty close by. Just a minute. The bullet not come close. Maybe follow a plenty bad shot. Here. Stoop down. You'll find the cord across the trail near the ground. I touched it with my foot. That what fire rifle? Yes. I see it. That's Murdoch. I know you're there. He must that way. Get out of here. I'll start shooting. Murdoch. 
Murdoch. I want to talk to you. Here's my answer. Oh, that bullet plenty close. I ain't talking to no one. Will you listen to me for one minute? No. I'll give you just about ten seconds to start down the trail. Now get. Hello. We'll have to leave for the time being. That's right. But I remember this hill. I've been here before. Oh, you remember time. We can reach the top from the other side by following a spring-fed stream. We go to top. Maybe we surprise Murdoch by coming down from above, huh? That's one plan that might succeed. Are you getting out? Yes, Murdoch. We may be back. The Lone Ranger and Tonto spent the greater part of the night circling the wide base of the hill. Then they started the long climb to the summit to put the masked man's plan into effect. Then Gilbert started for the gold mine soon after daybreak. In the dim hope of prevailing upon her father, Jessie went with her husband. They left their horses at the bottom of the hill and started up the trail. They passed the place where the Lone Ranger's foot had fired the rifle. They didn't notice another cunningly concealed cord a few paces ahead. Their eyes were fixed on the hillside above. You can see the tunnel from here, Jesse. I see it, Ben. But I don't see anything of Dad. He may have been bluffing in that note. No, he doesn't bluff. What the? Ben. That was a rifle. It was over there on the side of the trail. Look, up near the tunnel. There's Dad. Come no closer. Dad? Please let us come up there. No. Gilbert, can you hear me playing? Yes, of course. Can't hold out forever. That's my worry. You want to rush me with an army of men? I'll make you to the blasting powder and run along. Oh, Ben. I'm sure is prepared. You hear me? I heard you. Then you can tell the sheriff what I said. I see him riding this way to join you. The sheriff? There he is down there. Well, who's with him? That's the boy we saw with the masked man. I mean the other man. Probably a deputy. Come on, Jesse. We'll go down the trail to meet him. Doggone it, Jesse. I don't know what to make of your dad. You can see him up there, Sheriff. He's watching us. Yeah, I see him. He's threatened to shoot anyone who tries to get to well, him. Well, he'll do it, too. Sheriff, maybe we could sneak up at night. Oh, you can't do it, Deputy. He's got alarms fixed up so he can't be surprised. Well, we might get a posse in Russia. That won't work, either. He has a big supply of blasting powder. Uh, that about finishes my ideas. Uh, to think my old friend would do a local thing like this. Sheriff... Do you think he'd shoot at you if you went up there? Yeah, he would, Jesse. Hey, I got one more idea. Maybe we can starve him out. No, sir, you couldn't. Huh? What's that, Dan? He took enough food to last for a month. Well, Dan should know. He helped Murdoch pack his wagon. We can't wait for him to be starved out. I've got to get pay dirt from that mine before the first of the month. And the only thing I can see left is to go up there with our guns blazing. Oh, no. No, Deputy Jackson, not that. Well? Jesse. Yes, Sheriff Madison. When you was in pigtails, you used to call me Uncle Dave. Remember that? Yes. Remember how me and your dad were such good friends? How we used to sit by the hour playing checkers? Uh-huh. He'd get sore and blow off steam, and your ma and me would calm him down. I... I remember. I uh, sort of lost touch with Jim these past years. But I never forgot the times we used to have. I reckon you know that I think most as much of him as you do. What about it, Sheriff? Uncle Dave. I want you to leave this to my judgment. But you just I want said... you to go on home and stay there until we come. Dan Reed will go with you. But There's I can't. Go on now, Jesse. You... you won't. Oh, Sheriff. Come, dear. I'll help you to your horse. I'll go. I'll go, Ben, but I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you and and the sheriff. Stay there, boy. Now remember that. Yes, dear. Ready, Mrs. Gilbert? Yes. Get up, boy. Come along, Richard. Well, you heard what she said, Sheriff. Ben, I swore to enforce the law. Now, look here, Sheriff. Jim Murdoch has got to be moved. But not if it means shooting him. Not that. I'd sooner lose a gold mine. Take for you to say, Ben. I'm sorry. If you shoot that man, you know what it'll mean to Jesse. She'll never forget that he was killed because of me. Son, let me tell you something. Jim Murdoch has stolen a claim. It isn't as if he'd stolen it for himself. That don't matter. The law in this county is mighty strict about claim jumping. 
I've had to arrest a score of men for it. When they resisted arrest, I had to shoot. I can't let Murdoch get away with it because he's my friend. Maybe if you start up there, you can talk to him. He might listen to you. And well, I'm sure hoping that'll be the case. Sir, let me go in your place. No, thanks, deputy. This is my job. Maybe it... Like ended the suffering of a fine horse with a busted leg. Jim ain't himself. He, he's not the Jim I used to know. I'm going with you, Sheriff. Suit yourself about that, Ben. All three of us will go. I reckon I'd better make sure my gun's in working order. Murdoch is watching every move we make. Yeah, I expect he is. You two ready? I am. Going to ride or leave the horses here? Yeah, leave them here. We'll go on foot. Sheriff, if I thought talking would change your mind... It will, Ben. Might as well save your breath. He's watching us. Yeah, I can see him. There's the cord of one of the signal rifles. Yeah. You can see them if you watch close. Jim don't need a signal now. He knows we're coming for him. I'll wait here a minute. Jim, I'm calling on you to surrender. If you don't, I'll have to start shooting. I'll never surrender. Go back where you come from or I'll be the one to start shooting. You better give up, Murdoch. You heard bad? Arm, that's all. My gun arm. Get back to your wife! This is your last chance to surrender, Murdoch. Hold it, Sheriff. Huh? Ben, what's the matter with you, Ben? Put that gun down. No, I came along in case things reached the point where you had to fire. Don't be a fool. You can't shoot with your left hand. I can do well enough at this distance. I'd sooner let the old fool stay where he is than see him killed. Come on, we're going down. I got him, sir! No, no that's it. it. Now, give me that gun. Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Good work, deputy. Confound you. If it hadn't been for this bad Take it arm, easy, you... Ben. I savvy your position, but the law is the law. Jesse will be glad to know that you tried. Yeah. Keep an eye on him, deputy. Right. This is your last chance, Murdoch. Kill me if you want, but it won't save the gold ring. And light a fuse in the blasting powder. Blasting powder? Got several kegs of it. You'll seal the tunnel. Keep the fuse. You can see it better. Crazy fool. Get ready, shoot, and get away. The whole side of the mountain will come down. Let me try to rush him. Stay where you are, Ben. Got to do it. I hope it's a true shot. Wait, hold your fire. Look about the tunnel. Huh? Water. There's a flood coming down. Oh, oh, oh. Keep that. Keep that water back. Look at that horse. That's a masked man we met. The one that sent word to me. A torrent of water suddenly unleashed from the top of the mountain gushed straight toward Jim Murdoch. The old man turned from those below him. He saw the oncoming flood and stared at the spellbound. He neither saw nor heard the masked man who dashed in from one side on a white horse. Murdoch left one wild cry of alarm before the water struck. Hold that, good All right, Murdoch, I have you fixed. Doc, where did you come from? What happened to Murdoch? Water swept him off his feet. I carried him to dry ground. Is he dead? Uh, I think he struck his head when the water swept him off his feet. I put him down there. I still don't savvy where all that water came from. There's a stream running down the side of the mountain. There's a spring-fed lake at the top, Deputy. Oh. The stream originally came down this side. Ben Gilbert's uncle wanted to work his gold claim, so he dammed her up so it would flow down the other side. I suppose you busted the dam, huh? Yes, yeah, Sheriff. A sizable job. I don't know. I worked on it all night. We had to do something to keep Murdoch's gun still. You did more than that. You kept his kegs of blasting powder from exploding. Sheriff, you better make a litter. Carry your friend home. <laughs> Gaining consciousness. Oh, thank goodness. Oh. Dad, uh, speak to me. You're home, Dad. Uh, I wonder how he'll act when he learns he failed. Shoot me, Dave. Shoot me so I won't have to shoot you. Wake up, Jim. There'll be no more shooting. David, it's your move. I, uh... uh where am I? <laughs> Listen to me. You can't tanker his old cat no, Dave, I always told you that temper would get you into trouble. Down near made me shoot you. Dave, I I was a fool. I remember now. You were a lawman. Ben tried to save me. Where is Ben? Right here. I'm, I'm sorry I shot you. Oh, that's nothing. Dad, you mean that... I'm sorry, Jesse, for, for everything. Sorry? 
That's what you always said when you upset the checkerboard when you was losing the game. Oh, no. You don't know what it is to be sorry. That ratted curmudgeon you. Yeah, Dave, that sounds like, like old times. All that's wrong with you is that you're a lonesome old man. <laughs> you need someone to keep you in line, and it's a job for a two-fisted man, not for a girl like Jessie. Well, Dave, have you, have you got any eyes, Dave? You're doggone right I have. I'm quitting the sheriff to come back here and keep your horns cut short. <laughs> now hurry up and get well. There's a big mess to clean up at the store, and I don't aim to do it alone. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.